for today's lesson, we will be discussing about functions. So we will tackle the kinds of functions and we will also differentiate relation and function. Let's start with the definition of function. Function is a special kind of relation in which no two distinct ordered pairs have the same first element. It can also be defined as in an equation in two variables x and y. The variable y may be expressed as f of x if every value of x corresponds to a single value of y. So we have here now f of x. So this is just the same as our y variable. And of course, we still have the x variable. So take note that for every value of x, there's a corresponding single value of y. Now we have two kinds of variables for functions. We have the independent variable and the dependent variable. So what is the dependent independent variable? So the value that a function takes in is called the input or the independent variable. So in function, we have what we call as the input and output. So input, this is the one that we substitute to the given function. And we refer it as the independent variable. So in this case, our input or independent variable is x. Because if we go back to the definition of a function, for every value of x, there's a corresponding value of y. So we substitute whatever value of x is given to the function so that we can have an output, which is the y. This now gives us the dependent variable or the output. The corresponding value that it produces is the output or the dependent variable. So again, for every value of x that we input to the given function, there's a corresponding output or value for y. So that's why we call them as the independent variable and dependent variable. Because we assign values to x, and the values of y depends on the values of x given. Now, there are six kinds of functions. Linear, quadratic, constant, identity, absolute, and piecewise. So, we will discuss them one by one. What are these functions? And I will also give you examples. Let's start with linear function. So, a function f is a linear function if f of x is equal to mx plus b, where m and b are real numbers. We have f of x equals mx plus b. And we can assign any values for m and, m and b as long as they are real numbers. So an example of this is f of x equals 2x plus 3. So for linear function, for you to easily remember or identify a linear function, you just have to look at the degree of the function. When we say degree, it is the highest exponent. So for linear function, the degree or the highest exponent is always equal to 1. Another example of this is f of x equals, let's say, 3x. So that is a linear function. Next is we have quadratic function. So a quadratic function is any equation of the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a is not equal to 0. So this is the form that we have to follow for the quadratic function. But we have to take note that a should not be equal to 0. So an example is f of x equals x squared. Now, if for linear function, the degree is 1. For quadratic function, the degree is 2. Meaning, the highest exponent of the variable x will be equal to 2. So another example of quadratic function is f of x equals um, 2x squared plus 4. And so that is an example of a quadratic function since the highest exponent of variable x is 2 or the degree is 2. Next is we have constant function. Okay, so from the name itself, constant, we know that the definition of constant is there's no variable or we know that constant is just a single number okay so it applies also for this one so a linear function f is a constant function if f of x equals mx plus b where m is equal to zero and b is any real number so it's the same as the linear 
function but this time m is equal to 0. So what will happen if m is equal to 0? Meaning this term right here mx will be removed from the function itself and we will be just left with b which is referred as any real number. Okay, so for a constant function, there is no variable. So you can remember it like this. No variable included. So you will be just given a constant. So an example is f of x equals 3. Another example, f of x equals 5 f of x equals 10. So as long as the function doesn't have any variable or it's a single number only or a fraction, then it's called a constant function. Now, identity function. A linear function f is an identity function if f of x equals mx plus b where m is equal to 1 and b is 0. So this time, b is 0 which is our constant. So meaning there's no constant so this will be removed and strictly we have to follow that m is equal to 1 now what will happen is if m is equal to 1 so automatic we will be just left with a variable okay so it's the opposite of the constant function so if constant function uh, there's no variable it's just a single number for identity function it's just a variable with no constant Okay, so an example, f of x equals x. It can also be f of z equals z. What else? Uh, g of h equals h. Next is we have absolute value function. The function f is an absolute value function if for all real number x, f of x is absolute value of x. So you just have to look for the absolute value symbol, this one. If you see that your function has this symbol, then automatically it's called an absolute value function. So an example could be f of x equals absolute value of x plus 1. So again, you just have to look for the absolute value symbol. So if that one is present, automatic the function is called absolute value function. Another example, f of x equals absolute value of let's say 2x squared. There. So that is also an absolute value function. And last is we have the piecewise function. So a piecewise function or a compound function is a function defined by multiple sub-functions. So you have to take note of this. Where each sub-function applies to a certain interval of the main function's domain. Now the difference of piecewise function with other kinds of functions is that here we're dealing with two or more functions at the same time. And each function has a certain interval. So let me give you an example. So we have here f of x is equal to, then as you can see, there are two functions here. So what is the first one? We have x squared, and then the second one is we have negative x. So there are two functions given at the same time, and each function, there's a corresponding interval. So the function f of x is equal to x squared if x is less, greater than or equal to zero, f of x is equal to negative x if x is less than 0. So there are uh, two or more functions and each function there's a corresponding interval given. Now how will you distinguish a function from a relation? So these two are different. They're kind of related but there's a difference between the two. So let's define first what is a relation. So it is a set of objects such as numbers group with one another which may or may not represent a pattern. Simply a set of ordered pairs that are arranged in an orderly manner. So these are set of ordered pairs. So if we will put it uh, in terms of numbers, so we have a value of x, we have a value of y, and then we pair them. Now there are different kinds of relation. We have one-to-one -one correspondence. So what is one-to-one -one correspondence? Each value of the independent variable x is unique and is associated with a unique value of the dependent 
variable or what we call as y. So for relation, we're trying to identify the relationship between the independent variable x and the dependent variable which is y. Okay, so from the name itself, one to one, meaning there's one value of x for every value of y. So one value of x corresponds to one value of y. So the pairing is unique. That's what we call as one-to-one -one correspondence. So let me give you an example. This one. So let's say we have here x. The values of x we have 1, 2, 3, 4. And for the values of y we have 5, 6, 7, 8. So for every value of x, there's a corresponding value of y. So if your x is 1, automatic your y will be equal to 5. If x is 2, automatic your y is equal to 6. So on and so forth. The pairing is unique. Another example. So we have the same values of x and y. So if x is 1, your y is 6. If x is 2, your y is 8. If x is 3, your y is 7. If x is 4, your y is 5. So just remember, uh, for a uh, one value of x corresponds to one value of y. One value of y. Okay, next is we have many to one correspondence. So in this case, two or more values of x are associated with the same value of y. Okay, so for you to easily remember the different correspondence, you just have to look at the name itself. Okay, so your first one that is always x, second uh, term that is always for y. So two or more values of x are associated with the same value of y. So there are many value of x that corresponds to one value of y. So just imagine one, two or more values of x will give you same values of y. Example. So let's have here again the same numbers. So look at 1, 2, and 3. So they are different values of x, but they are just pertaining to one value of y, which is 6. So that's what we call as many to 1. Many values of x corresponds to a single value of y. Okay? So that is what we call as many to 1. Many values of x corresponds to one value of y. Another example, look at 1 and 2. They correspond to 6. So 3 and 4, they correspond to 7. So 2 or more values of x uh, sharing the same value of y. So that is many to 1. Next is we have 1 to many correspondence. Some values of x are associated with more than one value of y. More than one value of y. So one value of x corresponds to many value of y. So this time, there's only one x, but it gives you a lot of values of y. So that's one to many correspondence. Example. Look at this one. There's only one value of x given, but it can give you a lot of values of y. It can be 5, it can be 6, 7, or 8. So that's what we called as 1 to many. Another example, look at number, look at 2. So 2, if x is equal to 2, it can give us what values of y? 6, 7, and that's what we call as 1 to many. There's one value of x that corresponds to many values of y. Last is we have many to many correspondence. So what is many to many correspondence? Some values of x, both x and y, are associated with more than one value of their counterpart. Okay, so many x values can give us also many values of y. So it's like a combination of the last two. You can look at x here. We have 1 and 2. There's two values of x that gives us one value of y, which is 5. 
and then if you will look at here look at the three so if your x is three then the values of y can be seven and eight so it's a combination of one to many and many to one now which among these four is a function take note no distinct ordered pairs have the same first element that is for our function. Take note, our function, the value of x must be unique. You just have to remember this. If you want to identify a function, the value of x is unique. Now, which among these four will give us a unique value of x for each value of y? one to one we know that there's one value of x the corresponding value of y many to one the x are unique but the y is not so it's okay as long as the x is unique we will refer it as a function one to many one to many is not a function because there's only one value of x but it gives us a lot of values of y Okay, so there should be a unique value of x only. And then last, many to many is also not a function because one value of x can also give us a lot of values, a lot of values of y. So it's not a function. So for all the relation, the only function here is one to one and many to one. Also take note that all functions are relation not all relations are functions so it's like function is a subdivision of a relation okay we also have vertical line test so we can use this if we want to check if the given is a function or not using the graph so if we can draw a vertical line that intersects a given graph at more than one point then the graph represents a relation that is not a function look at this graph so this is a parabola that opens upward. If we draw a vertical line, it should touch the graph at exactly one point. Let's say this one. If it touch the graph at exactly one point, then it is a function. But if we do a vertical line test, let's say with this function, it touches the graph at two points, this one and this. That means it's not a function because it failed the vertical line test. It should only touch the graph once. So that is not a function. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the kinds of functions and then the difference between relation and functions. And see you next time.